The scripture reading today is from the book of James, chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. James 1, 2 through 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Well, good morning. I was uh, passing around this morning. I think I hopefully got all the children that wanted to take some notes. Um, show those to me after our services, and I have a, a bag full of goodies. Uh, but uh, hopefully I got everybody. If not, there are still some in the back in the foyer for anyone that would like to take part in that. And I also, uh, if you're a young kid and you are actually taking your own physical notes, which I ran into that, if you show me that, that will work just as good as the, the sheet of paper that I have. And you'll still, um, well, I'll let you take a look at the goodie bag. No, I'm just kidding. You can get something out of it as well. Um, but living above our storms it's a good thing to think about you know the analogy of a storm in our life every one of us at times has come into contact with different types of storms some of those storms are an emotional storm some of them are physical some of them are spiritual but we run into all kinds of different constraints and trials and, and things such as that. And, and we need to have, number one, the right perspective on that storm. You know, I'm not standing up here and saying, you know, let's all pray today that we all run into some stormy weather in our lives today. That's not what I'm saying, but we do need to be prepared. You know, you take a look at preparation. First of all, um, how many people, if they knew a tornado was coming and had a two-story house, would be at the top of the house instead of in the basement? You prepare, right? You want to be in the safest place possible. You know, how often do you see footage on the news? There's a hurricane coming. You know, a lot of times they'll hit Florida or, or Louisiana and places such as that. You know, we don't necessarily see them come up the coast all the way up to our area other than some rain. But you'll see news footage and you'll see people that are down there buying plywood and they're, uh, you know, boarding up their windows. Why is that? Because flying objects like to go through glass, don't they? So you board it up, you protect it. You know, you, in, in our day and age, um, there are even people that will stock food in their basement. Food to prepare for just in case. Now that just in case may never come, but it's the idea that you prepare. You know, I was uh, listening to something this morning and they were talking about how the military prepares its men. And you know, what they do is they, a lot of times put them through different scenarios and say, if this happens, or the enemy might have this type of a weapon, or you might hear this language being spoken. They prepare them before they go into the storm. And that's what we need to make sure that we are doing with our lives as well. Preparing ourselves, being ready for the storms of this life. Now, when you... When the remote works, it, it goes to the next slide usually. There we go. That wasn't me. Thanks, Bob. <clears throat> that looks pretty devastating up there, doesn't it? That's, uh, as you can tell from the, the footage, that is not a picture from our modern age. That is a black and white picture from the early 1900s. Now, on September 8th, 1900, a Category 4 hurricane ripped through Galveston, Texas, killing an estimated 12,000 people. A 15-foot storm surge flooded the city which was then situated at less than nine feet above sea level. And numerous homes and buildings were destroyed. The hurricane remained the worst weather-related disaster in U.S. history in terms of loss of life. After the hurricane, a large seawall was eventually built to protect Galveston from flooding. The city uh, was again hit 
uh, was pummeled again by major hurricanes in 1961 and 1983, but they caused less damage than the one that struck in the 1900s. Now think about that. A seawall. They built a seawall to protect their city. Now notice I didn't say because of that seawall there was still no damage. There, there was still some. There, there, I mean, it's, it's defensive, but it doesn't mean it's going to be perfect. And, and that's what we need to realize. Sometimes in the storms of life, you may fall down. You may get beat up. You may get hit. You may get blown away. Have you ever been walking through a windstorm? You know, I've never been through one where I thought I was actually going to be lifted off the ground. But I have walked through some wind where I literally had to put my weight forward in order to keep going. And you just prayed that the wind wasn't going to get any harder. Or nothing was going to fly up and hit you. You wanted to get to safety. You wanted to get behind walls as soon as possible. You know, we need to understand that... You're just going to have to keep an eye on me, Bob. It's not working. We need to understand that, you know, Jesus has the power to calm a physical storm. Now imagine that. Imagine Jesus who has the, the power to calm a, a physical storm. Do you think he could also calm your spiritual storm? Your physical human storm, that is, also? Mark 4, 35 through 41. We, I think we all know this passage well. On the day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was, and the other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Now, I want you to think about something for a minute, okay? There was a good portion of the apostles that were fishermen. They, they fished. They were on the water. They lived on the water. Now, for them to come to Jesus and say, do you not know we're perishing? That's a storm. We're not talking about a little bit of rain. It, it said in the passage, the water was already coming into the boat. I don't know about you, but uh, I like to stay dry when I'm in a boat. And usually when the boat starts to fill up with water, you got problems because the bottom of the sea is coming soon if you don't get it out of there. But we see that, that Jesus could uh, physically um, control the storm in Mark chapter 4, 31 through, or 35 through 41. And he woke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still, and the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. Do you not think that the Jesus that can do that to a physical storm? You know, think about that. He rebuked it. What does that mean? He yelled at the storm. What exactly did Jesus say? I don't know. He rebuked it. He yelled at it. He yelled at the storm. And the storm ceased. We also need to know... And realize that Jesus is our rock and our refuge. I gotta make sure, now that my remote's working, I gotta make sure I'm on. Okay, here we go. Now we're back on track. Psalms 18, verse 2. Jesus is our rock and our ref refuge. What is that? What is a refuge? Refuge is a safe place, right? A rock is a solid foundation. You know, the wise man built his house upon the rock. For what reason? Because it was strong. It was sturdy. It would withhold the storm. Foolish man, he built his house upon the sand. What happened when the storm came? Splat, right? The storm went and came and the house fell down. He's our rock and our refuge. So think about that. Now... If he's our rock and our refuge, sometimes in a storm, we may not be able to stop the storm, but we have a safe place to go. As I mentioned, you know, someone that hears a tornado coming, you know, they're going to go into their basement of their home. 
Or they're going to go into the lowest part they can and go into a room that, that has no windows. Sometimes Jesus protecting us from the storm is not getting us out of the weather. Sometimes Jesus' way is giving us refuge, helping us be protected while we're in that storm. So what is a spiritual storm? A spiritual storm is a trial, a tragedy, or a misfortune. A storms are, are happening everywhere all over the earth. All of us experience storms in life. Someone somewhere has experienced a storm of some sort even now. There, there may be someone sitting here right now that even in the, the worship service, even here in this moment, worshiping God, hearing the word of God may be troubled with something. And maybe the, the peace of the songs and the, the peace of the word of God is, is, has a calming uh, effect on you maybe, but the storm is still brewing outside of your home. Storms are a part of life. You know, you look around the world, think about that from the physical standpoint of storms in the world. No one is exempt from storms. Even God-loving, God-fearing, God's favorite Christians, I know I put that there just as a, a gist because all Christians are God's favorite. And all of the world are his, and he wants them to become Christians. But they're not exempt. We're not baptized into Christ and say, okay, the storms will be abated now. No, but it sure will be easier to get through if we lean upon God. If we trust, put our faith in him. There's no doubt that every single one of us here has, will, and maybe already is experiencing a storm. Matthew 5 and verse 45 says, So that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven, for he makes his sun rise on the evil and the, on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. We need to build our house upon the rock, Matthew 7, 24 through 27. Already made that reference to the wise man and the foolish man, the song that we sing. If the rain is, is coming on the wicked and the rain is coming on the just and the sun is shining on the wicked and the sun is shining on the just, what do we need to do? We need to build our houses right. We need to make sure that, that we're fortified, that we're, we're built upon the rock of Jesus Christ. You know, storms can come and, and will come to us in all shapes and sizes. You know, some people, if you've ever been in Florida, you know, you hear of their crazy weather, right? I, I heard someone say one time I was in the front yard in Florida and in the backyard it was raining. And 10 seconds later, the sun was shining and there was no rain at all. That's probably the kind of rain you want to see in Florida. But you know what? They also get those hurricanes, as I mentioned. And those are the ones you don't ask for. But sometimes we have a storm that will come and it will just blow over. Maybe it will be a storm we just see off in the distance and we're so prepared, we don't worry. Maybe it's a storm, it will rain on us for a little while and then blow over. The book of James, uh, chapter 1, 2 through 4, tells us that trials and temptations will come there's no doubt it's not a if it's not a maybe they will so what do we do for everything else in our lives that could be a problem we prepare for it we build ourselves up we encourage one another we even seek shelter when we need to You know, a storm can either make us or it can break us. It really comes down to how, how we respond to it. You know, there have been, and this isn't quite a storm, but I think the, the, the tragedy behind it is, is just as devastating. 
You know, there's often times, we've been seeing an awful lot in the last couple of years. It seems like there's been droughts and there's been fires. You know, Australia just was suffering through some uh, fires. California suffers all the time. But you know, imagine if a storm or, or a fire came through and burned down all of your home. And, and you looked at it after it was destroyed and you said, oh, that's it, I'm done, I can't do anymore. And you sat down on the rock and you gave up. You know, I'm sure that there's probably some people that come back home after a storm and see the devastation of their home and that's probably how they feel. How do I rebuild? And others will say, you know what? There's a way, we'll figure it out. Begin to clear the lot, begin to move the, the debris out of the way and begin to build again. Unfortunately, sometimes when storms hit us, the only option we have is to rebuild. To rebuild, to start over. Trials, tragedies, and misfortunes can either be a stepping stone or a stumbling block for us, depending on our heart's response. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 5-10 through 10. You yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone of, of stumbling and a rock of offense they stumble because they disobey the word and they are dis destined to do but you are a chosen race a royal priesthood a holy nation a people of his own possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light once you were not a people but now you are God's people once you had not received mercy but now you have received Mercy. Mercy. God has given us mercy. Even though we don't deserve it, God has given us mercy. Now we take a look at, you know, storms expose areas of weakness or unpreparedness in our lives. Now think about that. Do you, you think there's ever been a time that somebody storm-proof their house, did everything they could to protect it, went out of town and came back and the house was no longer there. Or maybe a portion that wasn't covered that you thought was, was destroyed. Trials, tragedies, and misfortune expose our character to surface the strength or the weakness of our character. It is not when everything is going well that our, our true character is revealed, but it is when things go wrong. That shows who we really are. Storms can bring good to us, and if we have the, the right attitude, if we prepare ourselves rightly. Now think about it, you know, I, I was just talking about the fact that there have been some forest fires and destruction by those fires. And, and you know, in, in 1990, there were some scientists that, that did some, some testing. And they, they, they really, what they found out was that when some of these fires come through, now unfortunately there's homes there and, and things in the way and whatnot, but sometimes these fires naturally reclaim the forest. What they do is they get rid of the disease, the, the, the bushes that are dying, the trees that are no good. And then guess what? After the fire, the seeds of life began to sprout again. So what I'm getting at is the, the fact that even, even in a forest fire, some good can come from that. Now obviously if someone loses a home or a person loses a life, then that, that's a different story. But naturally the fire is actually something that helps life to flourish. Romans 8 and verse 28, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. Now, that's one of those verses that sometimes people look to, and you know what? They misapply it. 
a lot of times that verse is misapplied. Yes, I believe that everything that happens, God can work good from. But you know, we need to remember a young man that his dad gave a coat of many colors to. You know, when he got that coat, he was happy. He was proud. He showed it off to his brothers. And, you know, unfortunately, he also told them about his dreams. Told his older brothers, you're going to bow down to me someday. That's what my dream said. I don't think I'd still be living if I would have told my brothers that they were going to bow down to me someday. He was lucky he only got thrown into a pit, I guess. But you know, you get to the end of that story, not the end, but when his brothers are reunited with him and they're, they're afraid because he's now Pharaoh's number two. And they're afraid he's going to retaliate. And you know what he said to them? What you meant for evil, God meant for good. So this passage here in Romans 8, 28 doesn't mean that there's never going to be things that happen that are bad. It also doesn't mean that, that because something bad happens, God's orchestrating it. God didn't orchestrate what, jo what Joseph went through. Do you think that the Almighty God could have put Joseph second in power in, in Egypt if he wanted to without his brothers throwing him into pit and th selling him into slavery? If that's where God wanted him to be, that's where he would have went. And that's what he would have became. But we do need to keep this verse in our minds in the fact that, you know, there are positive things that happen even in, in tragedy. You know, every person can escape the, the disastrous effects of a storm if they properly prepare. You know what? Sometimes preparing is fleeing. Go back to Joseph. What did Joseph do with Potiphar's wife? He ran away. Having stability and consistency in our prayer life or, or reading and studying of God's word, our attendance, our serving, our giving, our example, our character, our family time, our, our life mission of serving the Lord are so important as far as minimizing the disastrous effects of storms. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 58 Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that the Lord, that the Lord, uh, your labor, that whenever, I'm sorry, that knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. So we need to make sure that we have consistent prayer time. You know, Mark 1, 35, Jesus prayed constantly. Take a look at the life of Jesus and actually just read through the Bible and, and, and jump through and just look at all the different times that Jesus prayed. You want to know how to prepare and be prepared because of your prayer life? Take a look at Jesus. He prayed in the morning when there was a, something tough that was going to happen. He prayed. He prayed. He prayed. He prayed. You know, being consistent in studying and meditating of God's word. Isaiah 34, verse 16, seek and read from the book of the Lord. Psalms 1, 1 through 3, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked. Lord delights in those who meditate on him day and night. We also need to be consistent in our fellowship with one another, brothers and sisters together. Acts 2, verse 42, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, the breaking of bread and the prayers. Hebrews 10, 24, 25, and let us not consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as it is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. So we need to encourage one another. We need to do good to our brother in Galatians 6, verse 10. You know, so then as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, especially to those of the household of faith. Consistency. Consistent in our character, especially at home, we need to, to make sure that we're consistent, not just in this building, not when we uh, um, are just here worshiping, but at home, at work, at play. Psalms 101 verse 2, I will ponder the way that is blameless. Oh, when you come to me, I will walk with the integrity of the heart within my house. We also need to be consistent in our life mission. Joshua 24, verse 15, And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve. 
Now that generation of people looked to Joshua and said, you know what? We're going to serve the Lord. Fortunately, generations after fell and rose up to serve and fell and rose up to serve. No, no difference between that and us today. We need to remember that life has its challenges. Storms, trials, tragedies, and misfortunes can be very devastating, especially if we do not heed the warning to rightly, spiritually prepare our hearts. Again, as we stated, no one is exempt from trials or tragedies, but we can prepare for them. We can be strengthened from the trials or the tragedies we went through before. You know, are you growing and developing a stable, consistent walk with God? Something that all of us maybe need to ask ourselves. Am I with God? Am I constantly trying to serve God? And you know, even though life has its challenges, as the church, we can get through it. As individuals, we can get, get through it because God is with us. And as I bring this lesson here to a close this morning, we offer the invitation. We offer the invitation to anyone here that has heard the calling. If you're not baptized into Christ, then you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We encourage you to not hesitate any longer. Take those steps of faith. Become obedient to Him, confessing His name, repenting your sins and being baptized and having those sins washed away. Well, maybe you're here and you're already a Christian. Maybe there's a storm in your life. You know, it, it sure would be nice if we had like a Doppler radar, wouldn't it? For our spiritual storms. You know, you just turn on the news at night and say, well, Jason, you got a storm front coming in from the Northeast. Be prepared. Sometimes we get warnings, but we don't normally have those Sometimes storms just come. But if you're here and you're a Christian and you're struggling with something, you need prayers, you need encouragement, we ask that you don't wait any longer. If there's something that you need or something you need to do to make yourself right with God, please do that today. And if you're here this morning and you have any need, please come forward as we stand and sing.